Hi, welcome back to educator.com. This is the lesson on cell division. So we talk about the purpose of cell division. What is the point of it happening? Some of the reasons are more obvious than others, but there are really three main purposes or three main reasons that cells divide. Number one, growth and development. Obviously, to get from one cell, the first cell of life, to 100 trillion cells as a developed organism, you got to have cells dividing to make more cells. Not only is it growth, getting from that first cell, the zygote, to all the cells you have now, but it's also development, uh, getting those cells to become your liver, your heart, your muscles, to develop into the different tissues and organs of the body. So cell division definitely accounts for that. Tissue regeneration. This is not just injuries that we're talking about. Every second of every day of your life, you are regenerating tissues, uh, whether or not you're still growing, whether or not you're going through puberty. Th what this refers to is something like um, your red blood cells. The average human being loses about a million red blood cells per second every second of their life. And that's just an average approximation, but that's a lot of cells. So guess how many you need to make every second of your life? One million. Uh, some people might be a million and a half, might be two million. Depends on your body size, depends on your health, etc. But um, you have a lot of tissue regeneration going on. And if it doesn't happen adequately, you're going to have some health problems or worse. Of course, also, when you get injured, you need to have tissue regeneration happen. When you have damage to a part of the body, to a tissue, you need to be able to bring back cells through cell division to replace or make up for the ones that are damaged and are going to be gone. And of course, reproduction. Uh, this is not just reproduction of sexually reproducing organisms, but this is also reproduction of single-celled beings. Um, an amoeba or a um, paramecium, um, it can divide just bloop, like that to make two new ones. Um, and that's the process of mitosis for it to make two uh, new daughter cells. Uh, and essentially, it's doubled itself. We also reproduce, of course. Uh, the sexually reproducing organisms, whether we're talking about animals, plants, fungi, etc. Reproduction with them is a little bit different. Um, having two organisms contribute two sets of DNA to make a unique new individual is a little bit different. You have to get half the number of the genetic information from each person to make a new whole. Um, you can add 46 chromosomes for one person, 46 from the other, 92. It won't be a new human being. It won't work out. So there's a process where you have to take the chromosome number and divide it in half and get them to combine. And that's the process of meiosis. A little bit different with sexual reproduction, but we'll cover both kinds of cell division, mitosis and meiosis in this lesson. Here you have a micrograph, uh, an actual image from a microscope, and there's a little bit of fluorescence to, to show us what's what. Um, this is a, a cell that's at the end of mitosis, uh, anaphase, and you actually can see the, uh, the pulling of the, the chromosome information. You can see the spindle uh, apparatus that's pulling that genetic information to the sides of the cell. Pretty cool image. And then you have a cartoony... Uh, kind of version of cell division here. We have prophase, prometaphase, also known as late prophase, metaphase, anaphase, telophase, and leading to cytokinesis, and then eventually you're back into what's known as interphase once these two finish dividing. And we'll cover the details of what these phases are about coming up. In terms of why cells divide, it's not just the purpose of cell division, like what purpose does it serve in nature for organisms, but why do they inevitably need to divide? Why can't a cell just keep growing and growing and growing and growing and get this big? Why not? Well, cells need to divide because they cannot keep growing indefinitely. There's too much volume for them to manage. That's one of the reasons. Um, the largest cell in the human body by volume, not by length, but by volume, would be one single female egg cell. From what I've heard, if you could isolate it by itself on a table, just you know, look at it by itself, it looks like a grain of sand. That's actually very large. The average human cell, you cannot see because it's microscopic. You can have neurons that are this long, but they're so skinny, they're still microscopic. So by volume, the female egg cell, very large, 
But beyond that, you're not going to see cells uh, bigger than that. Um, one exception would be at the bottom of the ocean, there is so much pressure um, keeping um, cells from bursting, potentially, that you could have certain sea life with large uh, cells that have developed. And I, I, I've seen a video of one of them where they claim that that particular structure uh, is one cell that has grown to that size. On the surface of the Earth, a little bit different. Uh, different uh, stuff going on with the physics of it. But I digress. Factors that require cells to divide. Like I mentioned, you can't keep having a cell just grow and grow and grow and grow. The volume becomes too much to manage. It stretches out the plasma membrane way too much. And we look at surface to volume ratio, this sort of mathematical concept of surface area and volume changing over time shows us that. Now the average typical animal cell is spherical. In the human body, you get a lot of varieties though. You get long ones, you get, um, you do have round ones, skinny ones, differently shaped ones, just depending on what the function of that cell is. But instead of talking about a sphere, let's talk about a cube growing. It's the same basic concept. Um, just the, the formulas required to actually um, track surface to volume ratio with cubes are a little easier to talk about than the ones with spheres. So let's talk about a cube growing. And I've done this lab in classes before with sugar cubes. Um, but you could do it with any three-dimensional structure as it grows over time. So let's pretend that we've got this cube that's growing in. Um, this is a side. So right there, we're going to use S for side. That's a side, that's a side. And since it's a cube, all the sides should be the same length. So here we're going to talk about um, side length. One, two or three, and it could be millimeters, it could be centimeters. Let's say it's micrometers. I know it looks like a U, but there's actually a fancy looking M. Micrometers is millionths of a meter, very, very tiny. You would typically use this measurement to measure the average cell. Uh, nanometers would be smaller than that. So here's our side. Uh, we're gonna talk about surface area, volume, and then the ratio. This is a little table we got going here. The uh, formula to come up with the surface area here, it would be side squared times six. Why? Because one square to figure out the area of that is side times side, um, length times width, side times side, but times six because when you look at a cube, there actually are six sides. We're just measuring the area around the surface of it. So we talk about um, with one, side one, one squared times six ends up just being six square micrometers. Volume, a little bit different. Volume in terms of the measurement of all the stuff that would be inside of it, liquid or otherwise. The volume is length times width times height, side cubed, literally cubed. And of course that would be one micrometer cubed. So the ratio six to one. It becomes different when the cube gets a little bit bigger. When every side doubles in length, the cube is much larger. When we plug in two into there, four to the second power, uh, or sorry, two to the second power equals four times six. Twenty-four micrometers squared. When we put a two into there, two times two times two is eight. Reduce the ratio. What do we get? Three to one. The ratio has changed. A pattern is developing here. Finally, when we put a three in there, 3 squared, 9 times 6, 54 micrometers squared. And putting a 3 in there, 3 times 3 times 3, 27 cubic micrometers. Hey, when you reduce that, look what has happened here. The ratio is gradually changing. What this is telling us is that the volume 
is increasing at a much greater rate. It's catching up to the surface area very fast, and it's going to get to the point where it's going to be really hard for that surface, in the case of the cell, the plasma membrane, to contain that growing volume of the cytoplasm inside. So because of surface-to-volume ratio, eventually a cell needs to take itself and split in half. And each of those will continue to grow on their own, and the cycle will repeat itself. Those two will eventually divide, and so on and so forth. Genome to volume ratio, a little bit different, still has to do with relationship to volume, but genome referring to the chromosomes, the DNA inside the nucleus. Think about this. If the genome for humans is 46 chromosomes, and it is, 23 pairs, that doesn't change, meaning you don't get new chromosomes or additional chromosomes to manage a cell that's increasing in size. You have a fixed amount of information that's supposed to regulate a cell however big it gets. Think about this as an analogy. Let's say you have a very, very small town. 5,000 people, okay. Um, I come from a small town, um, and, and for where I live, it's 60,000 people. That's considered small in this part where I'm from, but if we think of a really small town, rural community, a few thousand people, let's say, you have a city council of five people managing a 5,000 person town. That's doable, totally fine. They can manage that town. Let's say 50 years from now, the town grows to be two million people from 5,000 to two million. That's a big change. If you only have five people managing that two million person city, it could get a little, little challenging for them to manage it. It's the same analogy with a fixed amount of genomic information of chromosomes managing an ever-increasing uh, cell in terms of its volume. So because of genome to volume ratio, eventually a cell needs to divide. They double the genetic information, but it's just copies of what was already there, and those copies are passed on to the two daughter cells, and they'll continue to manage themselves, and eventually copy the DNA again and pass it on. So because of surface to volume ratio and genome to volume ratio, limit cell size.